Good afternoon, everyone. We want to welcome you to our webinar today. We're excited to have Maria Tringali from Avalara with us, and she's going to be presenting on managing exempt customer experiences within Microsoft Dynamics. And before I pass it over to Maria, I just want to remind you that we are recording this session, and it will be posted to our on-demand webinar library for you to review and share with anyone. And if you do have any questions, please feel free to type those into the questions box on the webinar control panel, and we will get them answered at the end of our presentation. So now I'm going to pass it on over to Maria to kick off our presentation. So welcome, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Glad you are here today. So I'll go ahead and introduce myself while I pull my screen back up. Um, I am what we call a team lead here, which is kind of an interesting title. But what I do is I work with our partners and prospects and customers on uh, exempt, the processing of exempt customers, excuse me, the uh, working with exempt customers. And I specialize in working with manufacturers and distributors, but basically all types of businesses that would um, have exempt customers. So in a post-Wayfair world, oops, let's go back up here. In our post-Wayfair world, uh, our, we find that manufacturers and distributors have had to uh, get registered in a lot more states and, uh, and, and have to collect more certificates. And so there's a struggle with the, what does that customer experience look like? So that's what we wanna talk about today. Here we are. So um, I work with a, a lot of our integrations, Microsoft being one of them, and customers uh, working with those programs and of course with our partners. So we're here today to talk a little bit about the exempt customer experience, as well as what our SERP Capture product can do and how that can help. So before we launch into that, let's talk about, I just wanna remind everyone on the call that we have uh, some great information for our customers and partners on how all of the uh, COVID happenings have affected the sales tax community. We keep this up all the time. If you have not checked this website, I definitely recommend that you jot it down and uh, check back regularly. There's a, a lot of information out there that states are doing things to help businesses pay tax uh, uh, on an installment basis, the laws are changing, uh, states are changing the way things are taxed. So there's a lot going on there uh, out in the sales tax world and we're trying to keep track of all that information for you. So um, today we're gonna talk about how your business might be affected by the Wayfair ruling and what are those challenges, as I mentioned, for our sales tax exempt customers? What challenges can be in store for your business? And why is a flawless experience matters with our exempt customers? And of course, how Star Capture can help uh, if it does turn out that those are needs that you have. So let's dive right in. So most people tell me when I talk on this, I go to a lot of uh, user groups and conferences. And when we talk with manufacturers and distributors and businesses that have otherwise exempt customers, they often tell me, well, we don't charge tax, so I don't need that. So we're not talking about charging tax, we're talking about proving why you didn't today. And this, this is what I get all the time, most of my sales are exempt. But in our world, uh, credits and rebills, so even if you don't charge any tax, you have to have that document on file, so I know it happens all the time. We send an invoice out with tax on it, and then uh, the customer says, wait, 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 I'm exempt. And so then they submit their certificate after the fact. And we, the staff, we have to go back and uh, edit that invoice, reissue it, et cetera. No one likes doing that. The customer doesn't like it. You should know I'm exempt. And they don't like providing documentation. They really don't like the holdup in the sales process or the buying process in order to provide documentation. They don't know oftentimes the person submitting the information is not the tax person, so they don't know what they're supposed to uh, provide, et cetera. So we'll talk a little bit more about that. But the bottom line here is poor processes for managing those certificates creates negative customer experiences. I've been doing this for six years now, talking to customers every day, many customers every day. And I will tell you that most businesses do not even realize the negative customer experience they're creating they just have this process in place where they collect a document, but they don't really have a proactive, really good communication with their customers uh, that makes this process really smooth. It's just like a cost of doing business. 
And for us, the business, it's about collect, not about collecting the tax here, but proving why we're not charging tax. So from a bigger picture standpoint, I love this slide. I actually was given to me in my training week and I've used it ever since. So we often, we, by us being just people out there in the world, often look at tax compliance as just tax calculation. But as if you're on this call, you probably know that there's a lot more uh, that has to be dealt with in the sales tax world. Where do you have nexus? Do we have certificates? How do we handle them? Do we have an online presence? Is that B2C? Is that B2B? How do we handle it? Are we ready if there is a sales tax audit? Of course, there's the filing. And then the biggest part of this is customer satisfaction. In all of that stuff I just mentioned, we have to make sure that the customer sees a seamless um, communication with us. They're just gonna assume that we got all this other stuff under control. And if we don't, it frustrates them. So it's really important that we have a good process in place and that customers uh, see a smooth process from us. So first I wanna define exempt. So we're talking about exempt customers, but often it is confused with other things. So there's a couple ways to look at exempt in our business, in our world. So what we're talking about today is when a customer, the buyer doesn't pay tax and why that might be. So it could be use-based, it could be a reseller, a manufacturer, an agriculture company, and the products used, uh, because of how they're used, they're not taxable. So this is how that product is going to be used. Me as a company, I'm not tax exempt, but I'm not gonna pay you tax because I'm gonna resell your product, or I'm gonna use your product in manufacturing, which I'm then gonna sell to somebody else and collect the tax. So. Unlike that, we can pass that responsibility along, uh, or it can be entity-based. So my, my business itself might be tax-exempt, a not-for-profit hospital, a university, a city government, that sort of thing, or a project itself can be exempt. What we're not talking about today is products that are exempt. That's determined by Avatax, our tax engine, on how different products might be exempt in different states. So unfortunately, we use the same word for a couple of different things, but today we're talking about entities or um, that need to be exempt or how that product is gonna be used. So in that world, for businesses that sell to those types of customers, they were affected greatly by the recent Wayfair ruling, which I assume everyone is familiar with, but the, um, if you did have, if you haven't explored this, you should. And if you have explored it and realized that you're going to have to register in a lot more states moving forward, one of the things that a lot of people that I talk to haven't thought about yet is, oops, how am I gonna go and get those certificates? Now I've had all these customers, I already have them. They're already my happy customers. But in order to process the next invoice for them without charging tax, I now have to have paperwork on file that I've never had to ask them before. So how is my staff going to do that? And what is that experience going to look like for those purchasers? I'm going to interrupt that purchase process by saying, wait, I'm going to have to all of a sudden charge you tax because I didn't before because I didn't have Nexus there. So these are important things for businesses to be thinking about, and or they might lose customers or at least irritate their customers, and nobody wants that. And then how do we know what to collect? I love this. I found this actually in one of our Slack channels. But how do we know what to collect? So now we have to go register in several new states. I don't know what I'm supposed to collect from them. For all I know, they could give me a document like this. I don't know what I'm supposed to collect. And sometimes even my buyer, my customer doesn't realize, doesn't know what to accept either, what to submit either. So we need to be educated or at least have a platform in place that can validate what does that exemption certificate look like for that state of Mississippi that I've never been registered in. I don't know what that looks like. And you may have heard of the Streamlined Sales Tax Program. If you do qualify, so if you go through and determine how many states you've established nexus and given the new laws, and it turns out that the only reason for being there is because of the new economic nexus laws, you may qualify for the streamlined sales tax program. Avalara is a certified provider. 
and we can actually provide a lot of services for free because the states uh, uh, have signed us on as a provider and they actually pay us to go out and collect more sales tax for them and help small businesses get registered. So we do that. So if you do qualify as a volunteer, they call it a volunteer remitter, meaning you don't have the traditional physical presence, in any of these green states, Avalara can provide a lot of services for free. The kicker is uh, if you do have exempt business in those states and you need to collect certificates from your customers, you have to have those certificates with Avalara. You can no longer just store them under your desk and check that customer as exempt like the honor system. We're vouching for you because the state's letting us collect tax on their behalf. So we're vouching for you. So you do need to have those certificates with us. So if you're already a customer with us and you're not using Cert Capture, we definitely should look into that. And if you're not a customer yet, uh, we will definitely want to look at, take a look at this program and see if it applies to you and you can take advantage of that. So um, how many more do I need to collect? How are we going to know this? One of the challenges I find when I talk to prospective Avalara customers is they hadn't thought about the impact of that. So we might ask them, how many documents do you have on file that now? And they may have say 75, like in the example on the left, it's manufacturer in New York. They're currently only registered in New York. So they have only 75, I should say only, they have 75 documents on file now. But then when they went through the uh, Nexus exercise and based on the new laws, they had to register in additional states. When they started adding up the customers in those additional states that would want to be exempt moving forward, turns out they had to collect 1,100 documents. And in the second example there, a wholesaler had the same problem. They were only registered in New York, but they ended up having to register in almost all states. When they did the math of all the customers they had out there that were going to want to be exempt from sales tax, uh, it turned out they needed to collect 5,000 more. This is the thing I find most customers haven't looked into yet. They know they need to get tax rates for these new states, but they hadn't thought about how many documents that's going to be and what the effect is on their business, on their employees, and on their customers of going out and collecting those. This is a huge challenge. I, I do. I talk to prospects every day. I was literally just on the phone with one just before this call, and they don't know how many certificates they're going to need to collect. They have about uh, 250 on file now, but they're struggling with trying to figure out how many more they're going to need to collect and what that exercise looks like and how Cert Capture can help them. So let's talk a little bit more about that. So there are challenges for the buyer themselves. And I've mentioned a few of these. They don't like providing documentation. It holds up the process. Of course, your customer is not going to like a delay in their order. And of course, they get frustrated if you can't bill them properly. I can tell you in any business I've worked in throughout my career as a salesperson, if the first thing that my new customer gets from us is an invoice and it's perhaps incorrect, I'm going to hear about it. I have a very upset brand new customer if we somehow didn't get the billing accurate. It is not a very good first impression. So we want to make sure we're keeping this process smooth. They can also um, micro shop the competition. They don't like uh, having to do extra work to place that order, et cetera. There's also a challenge for the business. So the seller, there's lots of challenges here. We've talked about a little of these. The burden of proof is on you, but how do we know what we're collecting? Uh, how do we know what they're supposed to provide? Uh, it, it missing and invalid certificates can be very risky in a sales tax audit. Believe me, auditors know that the, the uh, tax rates, getting tax rates wrong by a couple pennies is not worth half as much as a missing exemption certificate. And managing all these documents is really time consuming for our uh, employees too. It's a, it's a big project. They don't know, again, what form should we collect? Every state, you know, thankfully in our society, we have a lot of states, but they all get to create their own rules. So there's all kinds of forms that need to be collected. How do my employees know what they need to collect in each state? They all have different expirations. I was just talking about this on my previous call today. How do we know when they expire? How do we tell, how do we know how to track it? How do we know what the rules are in each state? Florida's expire every year. Arizona's expire every year. Illinois has three years. So these are, they're all different. How do you know 
when uh, these documents need to be renewed and what and how and when to communicate with your customers. And then if you drill down into it, what about all that information that's on those forms? How do I know it's right? How do I know that tax ID number is the accurate one? Is that the proper name of the business? Uh, where do I find it? What type, what are they purchasing? So there's all kinds of data that needs to be verified on those documents as well. And I'm assuming most of our credit managers are not also tax experts. Other concerns businesses can have, you, we need to communicate across departments, across teams. Maybe the salesperson collects it, but they have to get it to accounting. Maybe accounting never gets it. Uh, if orders are delayed, there can be more work for our collections department, new orders placed on hold again. No one wants to not pro proceed with orders quickly. Uh, we want to get our products out to our customer. They may not pay us, maybe delays in payment. And of course, ultimately, there's a horrible thing of lost business that could also happen. So this is a lot of, as I said, most of my customers do not even think about these things. They just say, oh, the next time someone places an order, I'll just go grab that piece of paper. It's not actually that easy. Uh, this actually has come up uh, on a couple of recent conversations that I've had. A lot of people believe that just because they put a, a photo or a photocopy of their document in their ERP and they marked a customer exempt in their ERP, that that does the trick. Well, the truth is, we don't know if that document's valid just because there's a picture of something, but also most ERPs only allow you an on or off button for exempt. So there's no way to determine on a state to state level whether a customer wants to be exempt or not. Uh, so then it's a lot of other things. But this is a common misconception. Oh, my ERP has an exempt flag. But that exempt flag cannot exempt jobs, it can't exempt states, it can't exempt addresses, it's just a blanket. And that's, so that's a common misconception that I like to bring up when I talk to people. So with all of that drama going on, let's talk about uh, having a solution that simplifies this whole process. So you're probably familiar with Avatax and our sales tax suite. So we, uh, while we are a full end-to-end -end solution, that process starts literally with our customers. It is most important that we have good communication with our customers. If we're a business that sells to exempt customers, we really want to have that information, all their contact information and their exempt information on file prior to placing any orders with them. So Avalara knows that and can help you with that. So the first step in the Avatex Avalara sales tax suite is the certificate management piece. So we collect that, we, we help you collect that documentation from your customers in a really easy way that puts a little more of the responsibility on them to provide documentation and takes the burden off of our employees from knowing what it is uh, something need what document needs to be collected. So the way the process works is the first thing we do as your platform, so if you're using Dynamics or any of the Microsoft platforms, as that information, as an order information comes over to Avalara, the very first thing we do after we check the address, we validate the address, is check for an exemption certificate document. So as that get tax call comes through, we look, is there a certificate on file for that customer at this address, yes or no? If the answer is yes, we proceed with just um, stamping that sales information to our admin console, but we do not do a tax calculation. We recognize it as an order, we validate the certificate, but we don't calculate. If the answer is no, and there's no certificate, then we proceed with the tax calculation piece, which is what we're best known for. So a lot of people forget about this. That, and so I call it, instead of a tax calculation, this is a tax determination call. So we're determining whether that customer is taxable first. And then when we go to calculate tax, then we determine whether the items on the invoice are taxed and how they're taxed. So the first thing we do is check that customer. And then of course, you know the rest of the story. Once we have all of your orders uh, in our platform, that's how we're able to magically fill out your returns forms for your review. So you don't have to do all that manual labor. And then we'll do all the processing and remitting those to the government. So, CERCAPTURE is a super important part of our full uh, platform. 
So diving a little bit more into CERT Capture, uh, it integrates with platforms. So in some Microsoft cases, it's already, it's already integrated with your ERP. It helps you collect those documents, store them, track them, report on them, analyze them. Uh, it's way more than a document platform. We also handle all types of exemption types. Our, what we call our exempt matrix within the platform, which you can actually see if you're a user of the platform, actually shows you every type of exempt status that a state, that all states would accept and what that actual document is. So no matter what reason your customers might be exempt, we've got you, we can handle anything. And we track, sorry, we track those changes over time. So if states change their rules, if states change their forms, uh, we have a team of people that are literally keeping this up to date at all times. So not only can you check, can you collect certificates through your ERP or while you're setting up an account or while you're processing an order, but most businesses have other places where they would also like to collect exemption certificates or where a certificate needs to be on file so that we know not to calculate tax on that order. So this may be connected to your ERP or it may be a different um, platform that you're using. Uh, just does not matter. Cert Capture can work in any with any um, type of platform, whether it's a custom build or it's pre-built. Um, but it's uh, very unique in that we can integrate with a shopping cart, we can integrate with your website, and we can also integrate with a point of sale platform. And so you can collect certificates right there at the time of sale. Uh, you can also have people uh, submit a certificate right there in the e-commerce in a shopping cart, whether they're, they're B2C or B2B one time or multiple times. This is a huge differentiator for us. Nobody else has this capability. So let's take a look at that e-commerce capability. So what the platform allows you to do is add this little button here that says, is my purchase exempt. So I go to put a couple things in my shopping cart. Turns out I'm uh, a designer and I'm going to actually resell these products to my customer. So I want to be able to submit my exempt certificate right here when I place the order. Well, Cert Capture allows this. What it does is since I've already entered my, my buyer's information in here, when I click this button, it launches our uh, portal called Cert Express right at the point of purchase and allows me, the buyer, to enter my, to either attach a copy of my certificate or to fill out a digital form of that certificate right there in the buying process and have that exemption certificate applied to that sale in real time. And I can have it applied just to this sale if I want, or I can have it applied to all of my purchases moving forward. And if, uh, in the case where your um, shopping cart or your purchase experience, you have a customer portal where I have a my account experience where I can go in and see my previous orders, my wish list, that sort of thing over here on the left, I can also manage those certificates. So we have the capability to tie Cert Capture into that my account experience. So I can go and see as a buyer which certificates I have on file which might be expired, that little red button there, and I can update those in my own time as a buyer next time I go into my account. And so keeping these up to date, or if I added a state where I have nexus, et cetera. So this is, again, super brilliant. It allows the customer, the buyer, to take the responsibility, take a little more of the responsibility of when, where, and how they submit that form and making sure it's that accurate form. It literally serves up the form for them they can pull a copy, like I said, and attach it as a PDF, or they can fill it out digitally. So because it knows who I am and what my address is, it knows what to serve up for me as long as I put in the reason for why I want to be exempt. Um, and I can add states at will if I have locations in different states and I want to add more. As in this case, I have North Carolina and Virginia. I can add as many state certificates to my account as I want. And then in the retail, um, um, environment, that's the word. A lot of the manufacturers that I work for, work with, sometimes they have stores, 
Sometimes they also have just warehouses where people come and pick up their products. So Cert Capture also makes it super easy to collect these certificates at the point of sale. Again, you connect, you can connect with your point of sale um, platform, or you can actually just use the internet to collect the certificates, to pull up the form on a tablet, like you can see here in the example, and your customer can literally fill this information out, or you can scan in a copy of that document right there at the point of sale. So if you're in a business where this can hold up sales, or you have, wait, 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 we have to collect an account, or we need to charge you tax until you could submit us that documentation, this solves that whole problem. So it allows you to collect it in a few clicks and apply it to that sale right there over the counter. So I always imagine in my head something like the uh, pro desk at Home Depot, they might have this. They don't yet, but they should. They might have this um, uh, there right at that desk. Let me collect your certificate, get it right here on file, and it applies directly to that sale. And then the last part of what we offer is managed services. It's kind of a generic term, but to us that means we can actually help with this whole process. So let's go back to what I was um, talking about in the beginning of the presentation. I just had, or let's go back to that example of that uh, distributor who's had uh, a few certificates in the state of New York, but now he has to collect 5,000 of them from all of his customers across the country. What is that experience going to look like for my staff? How are they going to do that? And what is that experience going to look like for the buyer, for the customer who, as I said previously, has typically not had to pay tax on orders. They have just been able to place an order because I didn't have Nexus there, so I wasn't charging tax there. But now I'm charging, I need to charge tax because I have Nexus. So how am I going to interrupt that sort of flow of my buyer's process and say, wait, 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 now I need a document from you. So we have a team at Avalara of subject matter experts in tax compliance, in exemption certificates, in what states provided reasons for being exempt, all of that, uh, that will help you do that. So we can help you on a one-time basis. I call it a legacy project. So take that New York business again, for example, they could give us a list of all the customers across the country that they know want to be exempt, and we can create campaigns for them. So Cert Capture has built-in capabilities to communicate directly with customers. We can create postal mail campaigns. We can create email campaigns. The, um, the business would help us customize those letters. What would you like that letter to say? It has your logo on it. And we can go out to those customers on your behalf and collect those documents and not only collect them but look at them and validate with them when they come back make sure they're the right document make sure the dates are valid and take a look at them and make sure they're valid so you can be rest easily knowing that you have the right and valid documentation on file that'll hold up in the case of an audit and we can also do that on an ongoing basis so if you are a business that adds a lot of new customers on an ongoing basis, and you're gonna need some expertise in looking at these documents and making sure that they're valid once collected. Or if you're adding customers all the time uh, in an e-commerce shopping cart and you want it to apply to that sale immediately, but you want us to take a look at it and validate that after that initial sale. And then um, the last thing we do, not the last thing, but uh, one of the other things we do that I think is sort of the most little known thing is that last bullet point there, that pre and post phone support. So we will actually field the question. So back to my New York distributor with the 5,000 new documents he needs to collect. If they have questions for you on what, why, who, they're gonna pick up the phone and call you. If you email out 5,000 5, customers, they're gonna pick up the phone and call you. Some certain percentages, I guarantee it. So when we work with you, they can call us. So whatever questions they have, instead of asking your team, which probably doesn't have the answer, they can ask us, oh, what form do you need again? Or how soon do you need it? Or why do you need this? We actually provide that phone support for you and for your customers. I <laughs> to me, this is priceless. There's no way your staff would have this knowledge, and there's certainly no way your staff would have the time to look into it, to go to the Department of Revenue website, to try to answer questions. <clears throat> so I always um, talk to my customers, especially that New York manufacturer, 
this would just be something I would include uh, for all of my new customers at minimum on the one-time basis. My team can help you get that legacy project uh, up to speed in the platform and ready for use and ready for those next invoices so that you can move forward with business as usual. So we've talked a little bit about the uh, connecting with your ERP, your accounting platform. We're already built in to a few of the Microsoft platforms where the customer data and the document data get swapped back and forth between Cert Capture. If we're not in your platform or you use another platform, you're absolutely able to use our API and connect the two so that again, you can pass that data back and forth and you can also connect uh, to a website. Uh, super easily and allow that customer, allow customers to submit an exemption certificate either in the e-commerce um, experience, the shopping experience as we looked at, or uh, you can actually set that up in the, so request an account capability. So if I'm registering as a customer and setting up an account on your website, we would have the capability for uh, the customer to submit that exemption certificate in that account setup process. A lot of times what happens is I set a request an account online, goes into accounting, accounting then picks up the phone and calls me and says, you need to send me your certificate and then I have to go find the certificate. So there's a lot of extra steps to that. If we allow them to actually submit it in that create account experience, that whole process is going to go smoother for the buyer and smoother for the seller. So lots of capabilities there that we can talk to you about individually. This is just a quick example of the uh, some of the customers that use us, AutoZone, so very, very well known. Um, uh, big companies use the CERT Capture uh, capability. Uh, it's a, it's um, a game changer. A lot of our customers, when they see that e-commerce platform and that capability for a customer submit to submit that certificate at time of sale has been the sole reason why people have chosen cert capture because it's not something they ever imagined was possible and it is such a, an ease on the staff so these uh, companies have obviously chosen to use us and we're very proud of that uh, so in summary here as the some of the reasons, and to kind of summarize the reasons why CERT Capture is different and why this whole process is different than the way you may have thought before. One is you can collect those certificates your way. However you communicate with your customers, however you set up new accounts, CERT Capture supports it. In person, email, online, in the field, whatever. Uh, and then we take that paper. So I talk to manufacturers and distributors every day. And what they tell me is, yep, I collect a piece of paper and I scan it in or I stick it in a file cabinet under my desk or behind me in a binder. That is one dimensional data that is not trackable. This platform takes the data from those documents and turns it into pixels, turns it into digitized data that is trackable, can be validated, can be reported on, can be provided at the click of a, a button during an audit. So it, it's very different than document management. It's turning that data into usable data, making you compliant. And then on an ongoing basis, because it has built-in communication tools, it helps you stay in touch with your customers and stay ahead of the game and communicate with them directly and help them provide the right documentation. So taking a look at your business, you've probably been thinking about this the whole time, but kind of a cheat sheet here, and we'll make this deck available to you. Here's just some questions to ask yourself when you look at your business. How many states am I registered in now, or how many more do I need to register it? What percentage of my business is exempt? If it's highly exempt, I probably should be doing a better job of tracking these the data on the certificate, as well as making that experience a little smoother for my customers. What does that a customer experience look like? What about my B2B transactions? Am I looking at, or would I, in my dream world, like to push my B2B business more to the web? COVID has caused a lot of people to think this way. But if I do, how am I going to do that? Cert Capture can really help you with that. What's the quality of the documents I have? Who's collecting them? 
I have, I always joke around that I throw my 18 year old niece, Chloe, under the bus when I talk to customers because I have a lot of people tell me, well, I can just go have my niece, Chloe, go call all my customers and collect these documents. Well, first of all, that's kind of a silly exercise, right? Who is she going to call? How does she know who to talk to? She doesn't know how to talk sales tax. But worse, how does she know what she's collecting? So it's not really something that should be done by an intern or a college student. This is your business's risk at hand here. And of course, you know, do we have the expertise? So kind of a cheat sheet there for just to think about it, your next team meeting. How well are we doing with this? You know, how many boxes can we check here? And that's pretty much my presentation for today. Uh, I would love to know if there's any questions out there from the group. Thank you, Maria. Uh, yes, we do have a question. How do you charge a client for the managed service type work? Oh, okay, good question. It's a great question. So there's a couple different ways. <clears throat> Generally, we provide you with a custom scope of work by asking a few questions. And that is how many documents do we need to validate? And do you have email addresses on file? Are we gonna be sending email campaigns or are we going to need to do postal campaigns because postal costs us, takes a little bit more time. So we just do a quick call with you, get a little bit of information and it's uh, more or less a per document fee, but depends on how we're gonna communicate. It also depends on the quality of documents. Some um, of companies, especially during COVID, have already gone out proactively and collected new documents. Well, maybe we don't want to bother those customers again. We're going to assume those are valid, but we've got a whole bunch that we don't think are valid. So it's a little bit of a conversation and we create a custom scope of work. And then on an ongoing basis, same thing. We uh, can have a, a just include in your annual service ongoing support from a managed services team and that really depends on how many certificates you need to be adding on an ongoing basis or are you have a pretty static list of customers and we're just going to check those renewals for you once a year or once a quarter or whatever business rules you set up okay thank you if anybody has any additional questions for maria uh, please go ahead and type them into the questions box and we'll get them answered. While we're uh, waiting for that, um, I just want to thank Maria for presenting today and to everyone on our webinar or if you're watching on demand, we thank you for joining us. Yes, thank you so much for having me. I, I'm kind of a nerd about this stuff. I love talking about the exempt customers and exemption certificates. All right, Maria, I think we got everything covered. Um, no more questions have come through. Okay, terrific. You know where to find us if you do. Thanks again for your time. You're welcome, thank you. And just to let you guys know, uh, we do have a few more webinars coming soon. Tomorrow we have David from Azamba and he will be presenting on top five ways CRM helps you effectively manage remote sales teams. And then, Next Wednesday, we have Dennis Bruce from Data Masons, and he will be presenting on easily transition to cloud-based EDI for Dynamics 365 Business Central. So check out our website for more of our upcoming events, and that's anovia.com slash events. And also, Innovia has a podcast going on, if you have not heard of it already. It's called the Innovia Conversation, and we just want to encourage you to listen to our selection that Steve Waltz and Jeff Progolski have provided to us over the last year and a half. You can find out about all the different podcast platforms to listen to on our podcast page, and that's innovia.com slash podcast. So check out that selection and subscribe so you'll be notified when those new episodes air. And Anovia is proud to be a premier sponsor of Community Summit, which is coming up October 6th through the 9th in Nashville, Tennessee. Summit is the annual gathering for all Microsoft Dynamics NAV and Business Central users and supporters. This event is full of great sessions and to help develop leadership skills improve NAV VC skills, and learn how to get more from the investment our companies have made in the tool we use to run our businesses every day. 
So check out our conference page, and that's anovia.com slash conferences for more details and to save on your summit registration. All right, everyone, thank you again for joining us, and we look forward to seeing you again soon on another Anovia webinar. Have a great day, everyone.